Hello, Word Nerds! Happy Sunday! Welcome to our live chat today. Uh, today's chat is all about what has been filling your creative well lately, like when you've been writing or reading or what have you and you're feeling kind of bleh, uh, what gets you excited again to write or to just like get involved in creative stuff. I feel like all of us have just kind of done this the last couple of months with all the weird news and escapism and then trying to catch up on Goodreads goals and then trying to catch up on words before the end of the year and New Year's resolutions and what have you. So I'm sure we'll have a lot to talk about in that regard. <laughs> Uh, so the first question to kick us all off, and feel free to leave your own um, response in the comments, um, is to name one writing or story related thing, so be like a TV show or maybe like a writing app um, that has been like fulfilling you recently, um, and then also to name one non-story related thing. So for example, uh, the story related thing that I've felt uh, has like kind of like revamped me lately is that I started getting into reading romance novels <laughs> and I'm like oh this is so fun why didn't I do this before I love this um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then uh, the like, non-story related thing is that I started uh, branching out in what I've been cooking lately so that's been kind of fun to explore new areas of the grocery store and like I guess, well, you know, food blogs are like half story anyway, but <laughs> I'm trying to not <laughs> read those. <laughs> yeah. What's one of your favorite things that you've made, Rachel? Oh, that's a great question. Um, oh God, what did I make? <laughs> I got the questions. Like, I wasn't prepared for this. I know, oh God. <laughs> um, I'm making a lot of soup. So like okay. interesting Ooh. new combinations of, of soup. And like, there's this uh, one that I've been making that's like a tomato, spinach, chicken, sweet potato kind of, Kind of like winter soup and i'm enjoying that a lot recently <laughs> all right well what about you leah <laughs> what did you a couple of days? <laughs> i should have asked the question <laughs> you this on yourself <laughs> um i read uh a novella towards the end of um last year that i really enjoyed called um empress of salt and fortune um and it was adult fantasy and it was just like really an interesting approach because I haven't read many like fantasy novellas if I've read a novella it's been like more like classic lit um so it's just like really cool to read something from like a different format than my usual um so I guess that's kind of filling my creative well even though I haven't necessarily written anything because of it but like yeah, I've got like little ideas that have been popping into my head uh, um, and then as far as not writing um hmm. Well, I mean, I, I started a new job, so I've been doing a lot of training with that. Yeah, that's exciting. And also congratulations on your new job. Thank you. All right. What about you, Kelly? What's been going on with you? Um, so I had an obvious one that I was going to say, but I suspect Yellow Jackets will come up at some point later. So instead, <laughs> I will go to uh, Rachel, and you mentioned like at the end of last year, like rushing to Catch, like finish Goodreads goals. I'm really enjoying like starting off a fresh new year and I'm actually ahead of my Goodreads goal. Everything feels possible. I've been reading a lot of good books. Um, a Marvelous Light was the highlight so far, but I've been reading a lot. It feels really great. I just got that, that one. <laughs> it was really good. It gave me like kind of that post Harry Potter feeling I've been looking for of like, oh, mm. fun British magic that I'd want to know more about. So, <laughs> um, I think what my non-writing one was. Oh, um, also kind of in line with the beginning of the year, because this is always when I feel the most optimistic about things. I'm still really enjoying like my personal goals bingo card and the word nerd one as like a way to, they're all bigger goals. It's nothing I should have accomplished right away. So I'm just slowly chipping away at things, which feels nice and just like the world is my oyster for another couple of weeks and then we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> nice, all right. How about you, Erin? Uh, same as Kelly, I'm going to say Yellow Jackets. I'm definitely watching that right now, but uh, I guess that would go under story. Uh, but what I'm also doing that's like more involved is the writers group is doing this thing now where we're um, all basically coming up with a story on, on a, you know, write as you go, like read as you go basis. And that has me a lot more excited than I've been in a really long time just because it feels like, like, yeah, like Kelly said, the world is your oyster and like, it doesn't have to be marketable. It doesn't have to be like in a certain genre. 
I can literally write anything because I know it's just for fun. And so, yeah, that's giving, like, I get excited for every project, but like, this is giving me like a different kind of excitement where I'm like, I could do anything. This story can be whatever it wants to be. Um, yeah. so, excited without the pressure counts for a lot. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that has me really like pumped and excited. And I'm like looking at Pinterest and like, like getting all vibe ideas and stuff. Um, and then as for non story type things, um, I've been walking a lot, uh, whether it's on the treadmill or I can get out if it's not like pouring with rain. Um, there's a old growth kind of forest that's like a 20 minute drive from where I am. Um, not like old, old growth, but it's like medium growth, I guess. And it's still gorgeous. Um, so I've been, been there once and I want to go back again. Cause like, I find getting in nature really like, I don't know, it's like someone cleansing about it. So yeah, it's inspiring. Well, cool. And last but not least, Emma. Um, story related. I have, um, been spending a lot of time playing video games lately. Um, instead of reading or watching TV. Um, that's been kind of like more my story medium um, that I've been consuming a lot. Um, so I've, I don't know, I've just been really enjoying that. It's nice that it's so different um, because I think sometimes as a writer, sometimes even reading can start to like, kind of feel like a job. Like you're like, oh, I have to read these books um, because they are the big ones in my genre or whatever. Um, and so doing something that's just like so completely different, not related, it's a very different like medium. Um, the conventions are different. So that's been fun. I've been re um, playing um, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, um, which I'm like really, really enjoying. Um, so that, and also Yellow Jacket. Um, <laughs> um, and then non uh, reading or writing related, um, I got a Dutch oven for Christmas and I've made bread in it twice. It makes the best bread. And I'm like, I want to make it again. It's so good. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. Well, I mean, we all have to get together and like make food. <laughs> Every, you can make the soup, I'll make the bread. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Making me hungry. <laughs> all right. Oh, we have a couple people in the comments talking about their story and non story. So let's see. Vanessa says that story wise, that they've been drafting by hand versus typing. Yeah, absolutely. Mm, it's a different yeah. medium is great. Um, and watching The Witcher. I just finished season <laughs> one. <laughs> Oh, it's so, so good. good. Um, Season two then, is so good. Oh, oh I really have to get on it. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then non-writing wise, they've been teaching themselves how to paint. That's fun. Oh, that's mm -hmm. fun. Um, and then Anne Griswold says that writing related, they wrote 10K last week. Amazing. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then non-writing mm -hmm. is they bought a set of oil pastels. Okay. Mm. That sounds cool. Yeah. Uh, they mentioned that you can draw some landscapes for their story. That's a good idea. Just like it's like plotting, <laughs> but like plotting adjacent. <laughs> That's fun. Oh, it looks like Barry also made some bread. Great, love that. This is just looping back to the beginning of the pandemic when everybody was like starting <laughs> to make bread. bread. Yeah. yeah, great. Well, this is uh, twenty twenty two, like twenty. You know the joke about repeating twenty twenty. Twenty the second. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fast and Furious too. Yeah, Love part that. two. Yeah, two. Yeah, uh, wait, Andrew wait, two watching Two Furious. <laughs> yeah, Andrew watching Kanto better than expected. First thing in a while, they wrote fanfic for, which is awesome. Huh. Yeah. Yay. And Kanto is everywhere right now. So good. <laughs> I love I love the song. We don't talk about Bruno, but I am at a point where it's going to be ruined for me because everyone plays it so much. And plus, my kid has literally he watched Kanto twice this morning, and then wow. I sent the Wardners this like Snapchat because he literally walked up to my husband and was like, "We don't talk about Bruno." Like in his ear, <laughs> my husband was like, "Okay, <laughs> okay." Oh, children! <laughs> like, oh, accidentally creepy. creepy all the time. All the time. All the time. <laughs> all right. Well, you know what? You guys really want to talk about yellow jackets, so I'm gonna set a timer, and you guys can go for <laughs> no longer than ten You're minutes. Us. You only yeah. have ten minutes. <laughs> So talk, whatever you want to say about Yellow Jackets, go for it. I have four episodes left, so no spoilers. <laughs> oh, no, I haven't watched any of it yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we won't be spoiling or anything. I wish yeah. Megan was here because I know um, for her, Yellow Jackets is being kind of what we're talking about, though, where it's like she wants to write a story that makes her feel like Yellow Jackets feels. And that's where mm -hmm. the idea for this chat came from of like, 
those things that you just like throw yourself into media wise just get you really excited about storytelling again and i know mm -hmm. we have all done it at one point of like so many of us did after the raven boys of like oh i want to write a book like this now oh, for that, sure. like this is who yeah. i am now <laughs> yeah. we've all been there so yellow jackets has been kind of fun that, that way yeah. Yeah. I, it's funny because i was like i was like i love it i'm really enjoying it it's very intriguing and i was hoping it would give me vibes like that and get me really excited to do something like that it hasn't yet even though i'm very much enjoying i don't feel like it's that far off of like your vibe always like it's not like a whole new direction for you <laughs> 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 Yeah, for me, it's one of those stories I'm like really enjoying, but yeah, it isn't so much a like, oh, I want to write something like that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But yeah. it is just like reminding me of like how great stories can be, you know? And I think sometimes that like, even when you are like watching or reading something that's so different from what you write, like just like having something you can just like really fall into like that, that's just really good storytelling and like all the pieces are connecting together um, and like the pacing is great. Like that can just be mm. inspiring all, all on its own. Um, Can any of you when... think of any examples of things that have been like that for you? Mm. Of mm, like, I, I, The Witcher season feel... one was like that for me. Yeah. I want to mm. write something like season one of The Witcher, like the multiple timelines and stuff. Yeah. I feel like yeah. Gideon was a big one for Aaron. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely a book on my desktop right now that I still have to edit that is like pure Gideon vibes. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think what my last one was. I'm like, oh. I need to write this. Like, I get that with I books. With I get that with books quite often, but mm -hmm. and and TV shows as well. I had that also with. It's literally on my desk. Where are you playing bad heroines? Like mm -hmm. there was a lot of parts of that where I was like, oh yeah, I want this vibe. Um, so yeah. I know I had one fairly recently, but it's so hard to. <laughs> I really like the dynamic, um, <laughs> the dynamic in She-Ra between um, Capra and She-Ra, and then also the dynamic between um, Eve and Villanelle from Killing Eve. So I basically kind of like smashed those together for my current <laughs> work in progress. Nice. Is that like an enemies to lovers vibe? <clears throat> yeah, it actually is. It's, it's a thruple. So it's got Ooh. the enemies to lovers, and then it's got like the Timbo Prince, who's also part of <laughs> the thruple. Yeah. And, yeah, and so like in Shira, it's actually best friends to enemies to lovers. Yeah, which is like oh, top tier. <laughs> As all of the things. Yeah, that, should, I, oh. that was something I watched recently. I finished it like over my holiday break, um, and like just the character relationships in that show are so good. Like all the dynamics between different characters, like. While I do, didn't have any like specific story ideas or anything, I was like, yes, this is like the sort of like character relationships that like everyone wants to be able to write. Yeah, I don't think there was a single character that I didn't like. I mean, obviously there are villains so you're not supposed to like, but like you know, yeah. you still find aspects even like of them intriguing. even like Hordak, you start to like towards the yeah end, like, the villain, <laughs> and like you un understand. Uh oh, 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 sorry, you froze just a little bit there, Leah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I said, and then you um, you understand Shadow Weaver. You might not sympathize mm -hmm. with her. But you understand her. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm uh, really going through my notes of of like writing notes <laughs> just to be like, what it, what was that from? Do I remember what was that? I from? opened Netflix because I felt like that would bring it to me pretty quickly, and it did. The really recent one was Queer Eye of like writing <laughs> a group of like girl characters who like book to book they go and like help somebody else but then they're building their own relationships as they go it's not something i'd ever do but it was like oh that, this would feel so nice that would be a really cute middle grade series or like a middle <laughs> like a middle like a chapter oh, yeah. book kind of like that would be super adorable kind of like babysitter club-esque yeah exactly yeah, yeah. Actually, so, so one thing that I, I think I, I realized like what this came from is um, I really like uh, there's another YouTube channel called Overly Sarcastic Productions that also has a oh, podcast. Yeah. yeah. And they're uh, like a part of it is history and then part of it is um, mythology. So there's kind of you have both and sometimes they come together and it's run by two hosts named Red and Blue. And I, I love their voices. I love the way that they make their videos. They're very educational and snarky and fun. Um, but I really love watching those because it's like so you see the like, oh, this is a legend. And then they like go into how it's changed over time or like who, you know, who tells it, who told it, what, 
why this change why these gods are different and like that is so mm, interesting yeah. to me it's like oh that's so many different stories that all come together and if you oh i could use this particular point of this god's timeline to like write something else or then in the architecture like history thing maybe like oh this is the history of this like one dome in florence and you're like whoa i could write a whole thing <laughs> over you know like the the architect who did this whatever like in history or in fantasy like I feel like that is really like what my oh, brain's yeah. been, been processing lately. Um, and they're just like so fun and wonderful. So I would highly recommend that channel. Oh, Andrew Walker says they also love OSP. Hell yeah. <laughs> are, do you, are you talking about Rachel, the one, I cannot remember the God's name. It is, my brain has gone blank, but it, they, and I found that super fascinating. It's like the God of like wine and good times, essentially. Oh, Dionysus. Um, Yes, thank you, Dionysus. Yeah, that, is that, that the one you're talking such about? Such a cool video. Yes. Yeah, he's oh. like the god of like alcoholics and parties at this point in most like popular culture. But like, if you go way back, like um, overly sarcastic productions explains that he was like kind of terrifying to begin yeah. with. Like he would make like if he was pissed off, he'd like let's send you you know into insane fits let's make you into an insane person you know mm -hmm. <laughs> and he was like this kind of terrifying pagan god yeah um, and then, like how he like picked up a wine cult and then like that made yeah. him different and then like oh there's probably Super some lost association with like this other god and like yeah i yeah. think they're yeah they're they're like god deep dives i think are so yeah so cool. and how and, like people changed him to make him more palatable and, yeah, yeah, yeah it's really interesting yeah mm -hmm. i love stuff like that mm -hmm. um, absolutely the hey i, I picked up one a... is like it's so good <laughs> which one the Hades oh, that one, in particular. one? Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah that one in particular is like oh man there's so much there and i just i want to write it all because <laughs> it seems so mm -hmm. cool and fun there's so much good stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I picked up a book about uh, Norse mythology in particular, like Encyclopedia Ooh. of Norse Mythology. Um, and it's funny what's standing out to me as being inspiring. Um, like the weirdest little things, like there's this whole tale about Loki when he's being chased by all the gods because they're and then they turn him into a salmon and all this or he turns into a salmon and all this stuff. Um, but like the one thing that stuck out to me and that my brain was like, you need to write about this was that he builds himself a house in the woods and it has four entrances so that he can always see the gods coming for him. Oh, yeah. And I was like, what if you just like stumbled across this house with four entrances later? And it was like an ancient house, ancient ruins built by Loki. And I was like, that would have magic in the walls still. And like, like my brain just like will fat, like fixate on this one tiny little detail that's like an aside in the story, you know? So I don't know. I find stuff like that fascinating. Yeah, I think it's really yeah, fun I, to be able to pick up on those. Like, even in like other published books, I think it's so fun mm -hmm. to be able to pick up that little thing that the author probably just wrote in there as a throwaway, and then be like, yeah. "Oh, but this." <laughs> well, let's talk about this. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Leo. You were gonna say something? Oh no, that's all right. I I was just going to agree with uh, Aaron that that's often where I get like my little sparks of ideas. Is I'll just like mm -hmm. encounter something and like, oh let's try this out. Like one time I was floating on a, like a lazy river at a water park and they had, you know, the lifeguards standing around this, you know, circular river. Um, and I was like, oh, what if you had like death guards to like make sure that you stay in like the, the river of cold? <laughs> the river sticks. <laughs> Love it. Like that's so cool though. Actually, I'm pretty yeah. sure there's a part of the, uh, sorry, I'm like this is a part of the Egyptian pantheon of like the the cycle of Ra, who's the god that holds the sun. Part of it mm -hmm. is like he goes through the twelve kingdoms of night, um, and, yeah. that, and then like rises again in the in the morning. And I'm pretty sure one of the one of the well, hours a, of night is like a river, and there's people. There's like old gods standing on the sides, like watching him. Yeah, hmm. there's a ferryman who ferries people yeah. across. So yeah, it's very but, interesting. So there's like four new story ideas right there that I'm like, oh, I want to write that. <laughs> yeah. That sounds fun. <laughs> getting yeah other other osp love in the comments love that also uh valerie mentions that the faded mates podcast is a romance podcast uh and that says that they've been a great refill for my well but their trailblazer episodes they started this season have been on loop for me the past couple of months i'm always looking for new writing related podcasts so that sounds mm -hmm. fun and funky and maybe i'll check that out mm -hmm. 
Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, we just talked about stuff that we're excited for. So let's talk about more things we're excited about. Um, in the next couple of months, there's going to be just like things to get excited about this year. So I think one of the first things is that it's a couple of months away, but still April is Camp Nano. So that's something to look mm -hmm. forward to. So if you're maybe like feeling kind of like bleh about something, that could be a good point of year to like place your goals there, like look forward to it. And then that also gives you maybe a March to like start planning stuff. So I find like having something like that to look forward to is a good way to like refill yourself. Cause it's like, oh, I don't have to do it right now, but like, it's going to be fun coming up. <laughs> I think that's one of the reasons why I like every year without fail, I participate in Nano and Camp Nano. It is not like, I know I'm going to fail quote unquote, like I'm not going to make my goal. Um, but I think there's like a certain level of excitement for me that like really recharges me, particularly because of the community aspect of it. For some reason, it's just like, I can get myself pumped up about this, so I'm going to do it. I'm not going to not do it, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm not, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not holding yourself to the like, oh, well, I have to write X yeah. amount of words, I think is also good, which I don't Think, you don't have to do that for camp nano that's kind of like you can do whatever you want you, ch you choose yeah. your goal yeah, yeah, that's yeah. When i was doing the word nerd goal bingo card i made like participate in nanowrimo but the goal for camp was win camp because you set your own goal so and you have two mm -hmm. two cracks at it so mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah exactly mm -hmm. it was interesting i saw someone say that instead of counting words for their goals they're counting word sprints so they say like i want to mm -hmm. do at least two word sprints a day or something like that. And I thought that was an interesting way of looking at it. You're not really looking at, you know, what did I produce, but like how much time did I invest in thinking mm -hmm. about it or, you know, so I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Hmm. That's, I think that's a valuable lesson even to take into your writing life. Oh, <laughs> we have a baby on the set. Um, so. <laughs> in front of a live studio audience. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just that, um, there shouldn't be pressure on you to like hit some arbitrary goal because you are making this up, it, you know, particularly in Camp Nano and like, um, and yeah, using something for um, the, the kind of boost it gives you, you know, it's when you can grab onto that feeling, do it <laughs> and don't let like the pressure of your own goals, um, you know, suck the joy out of it, essentially. Just do it for fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. I also like what Leah mentioned, how you said, you just, or yes, you referring to somebody else saying that they were like doing word sprints instead of like counting words. I think that's a, a good idea. And I was thinking about this was like, oh, I want to have you know, all these New Year's goals of I want to lose 20 pounds or whatever. But it's like, well, do you just like you could just eat healthier like that? Could that maybe mm. that be a goal instead of being like, oh, I have to lose weight and I have to count calories and I have to diet. It's like, oh, well, maybe you can like start eating like vegetables for dinner every single day like that's so much more like it's like easier to do and you don't feel so stressed about it but like mm -hmm. you're still doing something to like make yourself feel better it's the difference between like giant overarching goals and small attainable steps mm -hmm. which is like important in normal life and then in <laughs> writing as well you know yeah but like the idea of like, oh, I want to I wanna write for 30 minutes every day. It doesn't mean I need to get a thousand words every day. It means that you want to, you know, if you put down five words, then that's, you know, you did it for 30 minutes and like, good for you. And I think like that's way like a healthier mindset mm -hmm. instead of being like, well, I need and to I get all these I especially like it because I'm a very slow writer. So anytime people are like, I got a thousand words in 30 minutes. And I'm like, I did not. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I like, was I like not goals. here. We can just bash on her a little <laughs> <Yeah>. bit. <laughs> I think it's like a difference in like goals that are like product fo focused versus like goals that are like action focused. So it's like, mm -hmm. I'm going to write for 30 minutes versus like, I'm going to produce a book in a month or something, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So like things that, yeah, sometimes that's a lot easier for me to be like, I'm going to do this thing, not like I'm going to accomplish this thing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good way to think about it yeah I always feel more like enthusiastic and more like hopeful if I'm just like oh tomorrow well like today for example uh, like yesterday I was like all right tomorrow is my free day and I'm gonna like I'm gonna film a video and I'm like is it gonna take me an hour is it gonna take me three hours I don't know but like I want to do that tomorrow and I did it took me like two hours but like 
<laughs> you know, I still did it. Like I finished it, uh, but it wasn't like, okay, well from 1 PM to 2 PM, I'm going to film this video. And then from 2.30 to this, like I wasn't stressing myself out over it. I'm like, I feel so much more, like I just feel better about that. <laughs> and I'm like, I think this is the energy I want to take into 2022. Yeah. That was something I changed on my goals last year as I started setting them weekly of like there's no like i have to do this on monday i'm like i have these these are the things i need to get done that aren't necessarily time sensitive like appointments and meetings and whatever is different but things that i just need to get done at some point this week but there's no pressure on like oh if i if monday's a disaster then i just am, everything's ruined already whatever i have the whole week i can spread it out however i want to if i have a time where i can know i can be productive but don't necessarily know what i need to do i have kind of a list to choose from it's really taken the pressure off and like left things open-ended enough that it feels less stressful. I, um, I really like what Joe Catherine says here. I made the new year's resolution to have my word doc open for at least 15 minutes. Even if all I do is, uh, read it or stare blankly. Um, and then says oftentimes it gets sucked in and write a bit. Um, and I, I really agree with this. I think that's a good New Year's resolution as opposed to like, I'm going to write three books this year because um, I often do the latter and then end up like, well, I didn't do that. I'm a failure, you know, so um, establishing habits every day that are like, you know, something that you can actually do that isn't like a crazy, giant, shiny goal. Um, and then you eventually often will get to that many books, you know, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. so, and if you don't, then it's no big deal because you haven't made this outrageous goal to try to try to meet, you know, I kind of did something similar to that with my goals this year as well. Like there's nothing I can really fail unless I reach the end of the year and I've done nothing. Like there's no like, Oh, well, if I haven't done this by September, this goal is dead. Like it was all yeah. very open-ended. I've just, yeah. as long as I do it, doesn't matter when I do it. I could do all of this in December if I absolutely had to except I'm not mm. supposed to do my entire bingo card, but you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've heard people mention a topic habit. I haven't read it yet though. I have, I have, I was going to say I habit stacking is one of the things that has actually really worked well for me um, from atomic habits, but yeah, being a, being a person with ADHD, I find it really hard to concentrate on books that aren't like, my intense interest so i only got through like a few <laughs> chapters of it but luckily the atomic habits or sorry this habit stacking was something i did read and was able to implement basically it's like oh you brush your teeth so now every time you brush your teeth you i don't know tidy up your bathroom that's one thing i did because my bathroom's always ah. a disgusting mess right so now that i've <laughs> attached the two habits i'm like oh my bathroom doesn't look like crap every time you know <laughs> so effective Oh, that's interesting. I like that idea. Mm -hmm. I haven't done it with my writing yet because that's like the one thing I will be guaranteed to do. Everything else can go to hell, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, well, so while we're still on the topic of goals, just one other thing I found that's kind of been helpful in the last little while in terms of like the things you don't really want to do and like what Aaron was saying about ADHD is I've started to like try to get myself excited about things that I don't know I don't actually care about. So like I watched a lot of clean talk when I knew I really needed to like clean my house and found all these cool new tips and like, oh, this is the mop that all of the clean talk people are using. And like for trying to get back into crochet and stuff, like watching a lot of that content and people who are enthusiastic about it, I find really helpful. Like one finding new tricks that just like, oh, I want to try this myself helps me kind of trick myself into getting excited about doing things. And also just like other people's enthusiasm is always awesome. I'm like, I envy you that you can like make that excitement happen in yourself because like even just thinking about watching clean talk videos makes me want to die. Like <laughs> I can't, I wish I could make that excitement happen in myself. <laughs> All right. Well, I on that note, I'm going to switch slightly over uh, to another topic that goes along with like the idea of, of refilling your well. Um, and that would be to know when to stop trying so hard. Um, I definitely burned myself out a couple of times last year. And I feel like if I keep doing those things, I'm definitely going to burn out a couple more times this year. And I really don't want to do that. It's not fun. I don't like it. So there, I, there's like this big 
narrative of like, oh, well, you're, if you can't do this thing, you know, you're just not trying hard enough. Or, you know, like take a week break and then you'll be fresh and ready to go again and, you know, start off that first day with a 10,000 words goal and like do all this stuff. So I think it's a, a good thing to kind of like analyze and like like what you're doing and realize that it is okay to not to not feel guilty about not doing something and kind of like let yourself enjoy having a break. As Megan once said, when all else fails, fail. <laughs> if you're not enjoying it, if you hate it, it's okay to just be like, this is not for me, or I need to take a break, or this particular attempt was not a success. It's okay. I think it's also really important to give ourselves grace because we are still in a pandemic. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like now that we've reached like a certain, like what, two years now, has it been like a lot of us are like, well, it's time to get back to being productive. And it's like, my kid has been home for the last 10 days because there was one single case in his daycare and therefore everything shuts down. And I'm like, I can't write when I've got a four-year-old running around whispering lines from Encanto in my ear like that's just not gonna happen and I've had to learn how to not be hard on myself and get used to that you know so yeah I don't know I think with a lot of us there's a tendency to not forget that we're in the middle of this because we're in the middle of it but like still be hard on ourselves in spite of that yeah. I think originally for this year I was a little worried I'd struggle to come out the other way of like, oh, I've really learned how to give myself grace. I'm very good at that now. And I need to start like going the other direction again. I'm like, okay, 2022 is going to be that year. And then oh, we're gone. And we put my dog down on the last say, day of 2021. It's not, it's just, yeah, like it's just. Yeah. We were just okay, joking but like about... a month before 2022, it looked like this year was going to be okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> then yeah. we were just joking that like 2022 is like 2020 part two, right? Like mm -hmm. season three. No, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what it is. You know? Speaking of shows that we don't like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this well, is something that I struggle with a lot of like being okay with you know taking a break and everything um i don't know if people are believing um in zodiac signs or take any you know bits and pieces from them but i'm a capricorn so like taking a break is hard mm -hmm. um but i do remember i don't of course remember the author or the podcast um but it's one where the person interviews authors and asks questions about their career and books and such and um this author was talking about how when they first started out they, I think they had kids at home that they were caring for. And I don't know if they had, I think they also had a, a job too, um, other than writing. And so they said, I could only manage one chapter a month. And like once a month, I would get together with my writing group and I'd have this one chapter. Um, and I remember hearing that and thinking, oh my gosh, I get like so upset with myself if I don't get like a chapter a week done because that's how often I meet with my writing group is once a week. Um, but then just kind of like going back into that mindset of like, if it takes a month to write, it takes a month to write, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. which I think would be the more graceful way to go about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I've seen a lot on Twitter as well of people who are like, I guess, older specifically older adults who write YA and saying like there's a big pressure of being like 23 with that debut novel that hits the New York Times bestseller list and there's all these women and men who are in their like 40s and 50s who are like yeah I've just put out my debut young adult novel and it took me you know 20 years to write and here it is and like you don't have to be 20 to be able to like accomplish something I think that's something that I've taken to heart a lot recently feeling like oh I'm too old to have not accomplished this thing or like I can't start that now I'm already 26 and then being like that doesn't make any sense <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> no, like, definitely. if you want to do something like start trying to do it you know I think if you look into that sorry no go, go ahead, ahead. I was gonna say something different so. I was gonna say I think if you look into some of the like most famous classic authors they were published in their like 40s and 50s and stuff so <laughs> i don't know where we got this idea you have to be like a 21 year old superstar new york times best-selling author I think it's you know? probably on veronica roth that's just that's what I was and what samantha things you're saying. Thanks, veronica. <laughs> and samantha shannon who got like a seven book deal at like 22 and i'm like well wasn't tahara mafi super young too when she got 
published or am I wrong on that? I don't know. But I feel like Divergent was like the look. Yeah, yeah. It's possible. Why can't you oh, do famous. it? Famous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why don't you do this at 20? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> Emma, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say something I've like realized um, like relating to like when you need to like take a step back or take a break um, is that often like if I reach a point where I'm just hating everything about like a certain things so, like if I'm just not liking any of the books that I'm reading or I'm not enjoying sitting down to write um that a lot of times like it means I need to change gears in some way and try something new um so like when I just was like when I wasn't like hating all the fantasy books I was reading or anything but I just wasn't really finding anything I was loving um I like switched gears and like read a bunch of romance novels instead um and just kind of like cleansing the palette because I think sometimes you can get so deep into something that like it starts to once again it starts to like feel like a chore and feel like a job and writing can be that way too sometimes like if you're just like not enjoying anything that you're writing like try writing something new try like a new genre or a new format um i think that can be like really helpful to just like reset your brain um, you kind of like being, yeah um that close to writing reading can feel like that sometimes like oh yeah. this is what i'm supposed to be reading this is how i stay on top of the industry of like this is what everyone is reading and that can not always be fun. Yeah. Yep. Feeling like you have to read <laughs> like yeah. certain things and certain types of books all the time. It's like, yeah. yeah. It's okay think, to just yeah, go read something that, wildly different. That's something that I've been trying to balance and I'm still trying to balance it where I get fully, I admit, I fully get sucked into hype and people talking about stuff on Twitter or on TikTok or whatever, being like, this book is the most amazing thing ever. And so I'm like, well, I gotta buy it. Even though I'm like, I have a thriller novel that I'm like, this sounds really cool. I don't read thrillers. I just don't. I don't enjoy them. I don't, I don't know. I've ever, everyone said that it was amazing. So I got it. And I'm like, well, I guess I just wasted my money on it. Cause like, I'm not going to read it. But like, also, <laughs> ooh, also part of me is like, push yourself, get outside your comfort zone. But I'm like, I get think outside of my comfort zone now is romance novels that I have started reading and like thriller like it just ain't it and I think I've like accepted that about myself and now I'm like you know what even if everyone else is saying that it's the greatest thing ever I guess I'm just not gonna read the greatest thing ever because it's just not something I'm interested in and, and so that's... many of those times I'm disappointed in the result unless it's yeah. you guys that have told me to read something if everyone is saying it's great it's like 50 50. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. it's like yeah. those reviews you see on books that are like i don't ever usually read ya fantasy uh, but then i read this and i hated it and, it, and then it's like a one-star review and you're like you hate ya fantasy so yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like why it. are you here okay. yeah. so something i yourself? something i have to do occasionally is like go through my goodreads tbr and like actually like stop and think about each of the books and like read the description and be like, do I actually want to read this? Does it actually sound like a book I would like? Or is it just mm -hmm. on here because everyone's saying you have to read it? You know, like, mm -hmm. and there's certain books that I'm sure are wonderful books, but like, I, I'm just not interested in the synopsis and that's okay, <laughs> you know? I like um, what Tassana Claremont said, uh, I tend to get o easily overwhelmed with tasks and learn that taking extended breaks is something that is necessary for a part of my creative process. And I really like that. It took me a really long time to not feel guilty, even about, sorry, there's really loud sirens outside. <laughs> um, it took me a long time to learn not to feel guilty um, about having an extended time of like letting an idea kind of percolate and like looking up Pinterest boards, listening to music that gets me stoked about it, um, consuming other media that has similar vibes. Like I would still feel like I should rush that process and start writing. Like I don't have anything done on this. It's not really started until I start writing, but it still is part of my process. And I've had to learn that like, yeah, it feels like a break, but it still isn't. Like it's still part of your writing. It's a necessary part right so i don't know i think that's really important to give yourself grace and realize that like you're still writing you're still doing what you want to be doing it's just a different stage you're at you know mm -hmm. yeah like in griswold said i told myself i was not allowed to read the first two weeks of the year so i would focus on writing and i know that's the reason i wrote 10k in a week i have to find a balance and i think it's yeah finding that balance of like there's times where you like really need to be working and times when you need to be refilling your creative well and like reading or watching tv or whatever 
Um, That's something I noticed that I was doing actually when I started watching The Witcher because, uh, <laughs> hi, I'm Rachel. I never watch anything that comes out. It actually ever. just occurred to me, like, oh, I'm Rachel's like, watching TV. I am. <laughs> it's, so weird. it's so weird. Um, I never watch anything ever. I don't know why. It's just like, I just don't watch stuff. It's just not my preferred medium of things. But finally, um, I was like a little sick, not like COVID sick, but just like sniffles sick uh, a little while ago. And so I was like, I'm going to watch The Witcher. Why the hell not? I've been hearing about it and it seems cool. So I watched the first season over a couple of days. And one of the things I found myself doing, because I guess I was kind of sick and like I wasn't going to work and, you know, whatever. I was like, well, I have to like find inspiration in this. <laughs> and I think I did it for the first like couple episodes where I was like, okay, well, there's uh, just a princess who's on the run. Okay, well, uh, let's start plotting something with that. Like we could do that. Um, oh, uh, you know the Geralt's character like okay move can like move something off of that and I had to just be like can you relax and just like enjoy this <laughs> like just because you're not going to work like doesn't mean you like have to be productive in all kind of aspects of your life like just watch the show and like have a good time well um, yeah and you never know like that that might come later that's what i always tell myself mm -hmm. i don't have to force myself into the inspiration i could watch a whole show and think of like one specific scene later and have something pop up in my brain right like it's just i relaxation <laughs> not pressuring yourself is the key just so much you know mm -hmm. um we did have a question about uh, what is your process in following your creative ideas? Do we want to talk about that mm -hmm. at some point? <laughs> that sort of is, yeah, I, mean, I guess, can, related to. Yeah, we can talk about that now. Filling our it's like sparks that creativity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for me, is, I mean, the first thing I do is write it down that, somewhere because whenever I remember it. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I was getting you were delayed a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was just saying, um, yeah, the first thing I always do is write it down. Usually in my phone, I have like a note in my notes app where I can just like make a note of like, oh, I was really inspired by this thing. I want to write this type of story um, because like it's probably going to be, I mean, sometimes it's immediate. Sometimes I have an idea and like I write it the next month. That's what happened with Nana this last year. But um, but usually it's something that's going to like sit there for like a year or two before I like start to have more ideas. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely somebody who does the same thing. I will write something down. And normally I have something else on the go. Like I'm in the middle of writing something else. I'm in the middle of drafting or editing. And like, I, like I can't, like A, I've learned even before I was published, don't put it down because you won't finish the other thing. Um, but at this point as well, putting it down is not an option because I do have deadlines and somebody expecting the thing I'm working on. But that actually has worked out really well to let the idea, like force me to let the idea percolate percolate and kind of um, build on top of itself. Um, so even if I'm not thinking about it, that's when all the ideas for the new project tend to hit me, of course, because it's like the shiny new thing that you should be writing instead, come on. Um, and that actually kind of works well because by the time I'm finished, whatever I'm working on, it's a you know fuller idea that I can really start to sink my teeth into and um, you know start plotting out a little bit. So yeah, I was going to say that uh, similar that I'll just you know jot something down in a, a note on my phone, or I'll actually bring up a Word doc and type out all the things that I thought of. Um, but usually it's just like a stray world building idea that I get, like the lifeguard death guard thing I was talking about. So it's not always like a fully formed plot um, idea, it's just like the very kernel of an idea. Um, and so I have like a bunch of folders uh, of works in progress that are just named the most random things like girl has mother trapped in lightning. And it's like, what does that mean? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Uh, but I did uh, find, I think, that the way my brain works is because it knows that brainstorming is my favorite part of the writing process. Anytime I'm working on something that is not brainstorming, it's like, hey, here's this other idea for you. Oh, and this idea. And so I was messaging the group about an idea for like an adult rom-com that popped up and it doesn't have any magic in it. I've never written anything without magic. Like, what's going on, Grace? Um, but then I happened to go back into my works in progress folder and I found a story idea I had for like a YA contemporary that I never wrote because it didn't have any magic. Um, and then I was like, actually, these two ideas 
<laughs> could go together. And one of them I came up with in 2017 and the other in 2022. <laughs> so that was interesting. Yeah, every once in a while combined. I go back through my like writing note and I'm like, I, I wrote that? What? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's actually kind of good. What? Like, you know, there's some idea notes I find that I'm like, who wrote that down? <laughs> what does yeah. this mean? <laughs> the worst ones though, where you're like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah. It's like it made sense and you wrote it down. Or like the things that like you write down at like 2 a.m. where you wake up, you're like, I have a great idea. You write it down, you get oh in the morning and it's like oranges and you're like, what? <laughs> What does this mean? Yeah. <laughs> like magic oranges. What yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's just priority. Usually it's like, tree. Yeah, you're just dreaming about the book. Usually it's like <laughs> something I think I is wildly clever at the time while I'm half asleep, and then I wake up and I'm like, this is so stupid. <laughs> nothing original about that. Um, oh, just jumping that into kind of help. Oh, sorry. Um, real quick, the um, if you have like a voice recorder app. Mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah. Down sometimes Yeah, you get the whole thought out a lot faster mm -hmm. than just the one. Um, so I'm jumping into Ed Griswold and Misty Kate's conversation. And Griswold does not binge TV um, and enjoys the show more, getting to speculate on what's going to happen. I think that's a lot of what the appeal of Yellow Jackets had been. Like I rushed to get caught up before the finale of because Megan has been really enjoying that, like going on the subreddit after every episode and speculating mm -hmm. with other people and just kind of guessing about what's going to happen next and having some of that like community storytelling elements of like, mm -hmm. that's what I miss from the final season of Game of Thrones and like everybody mm -hmm. every week being like, is this what's going to happen? And then just being miserable together. But <laughs> I that's remember very fulfilling creatively. <laughs> I remember it being such an unpopular opinion, like kind of in the earlier days of Netflix, like around the time, back when like Stranger Things, like when they first started doing like their original shows and just dropping them all at once. Um, like everybody was like, oh, I love these streaming services because like we just get the whole season at once and we can watch it all at once and we don't have to wait. And I missed like waiting every week for episodes and like everyone was like, are you crazy? And I was like, I miss like, yeah, wondering what was going to happen, having that time to like anticipate it and like build up the anticipation. So I'm like excited that other people are like starting to see yeah. like the and positive side of we see sad that, like i haven't watched season two of the witcher yet and like i've already missed the window on people talking about it you either watch it mm -hmm. immediately if you want to be part of the conversation or you're done yeah. so mm -hmm. that part is yeah fun. i love the conversation when you get like weekly episodes so i'm glad that like disney and hbo and um and showtime are doing that because i yeah i love the community that builds around a show when you have that Mm -hmm. it's also kind of fun because you get to be like oh it's wednesday you know <laughs> this is a new mm -hmm. show drops exactly like, but like yeah. back in the day i don't know mm -hmm. <laughs> before streaming services and we all had to yeah. you know buy our but channel bundle it'd be nice if yeah. like netflix doesn't necessarily always have to do it this way like you look at the storytelling and is mm -hmm. it basically just a little movie split up into episodes or is it something where there's that benefit of having time to sit with it yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Joe Catherine right. said fandom has definitely changed now that we often have access to the entire season. Mm -hmm. I agree. All right, well, we've been going for a little while, not a full hour, but a little while. So let's uh, let's reiterate and wrap up some things that will help you uh, recharge your creative well. So one of them is to do things for fun. <laughs> Another one of them is to just like enjoy, enjoy whatever you want to enjoy. Maybe it's outside of what you usually do, but you can, you know, switch gears. Somebody else. Uh, taking the pressure off of something that came up a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Just easier yeah, said letting than it take the time to take. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even even refilling your inkwell does not have to be a pressure filled thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going exactly. to be inspired again by next Tuesday. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> this is the schedule for inspiration. <laughs> exactly. I love some of these comments. Joe Catherine said, woke up from a dead sleep once, wrote, it's the bracelet, all of them, on the wall with a pencil. <laughs> Still have no idea what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that would be kind of like a cool writing prompt where you just have to like choose something that you've madly scribbled down and you have to build a story <laughs> from it. <laughs> Um, that could be, I think it's kind of like be, a fun word nerd chat. I think it's kind of along the lines of the game we're going to play. I'm using it from like an oh, app, but it's basically mm -hmm. like you get 
either the title or a synopsis. I think it's the title of a book or a movie or something. I haven't totally figured out how much I'm going to do, but and then everyone comes up with what do you think this plot is, and then it's kind of that like I'll add the real one in, then the list everybody's like. And then you kind of guess which one it is, but you're just going off of this title of like, this this sounds legit. Oh, that sounds legit. that yeah. reminds me of the game, um, a board game called Balderdash. Have any of you ever played that? Oh yeah, I think so. Because it has like different categories, and one of them is film based, where they give you a title and then you have to write the plot of the movie, and then there's other ones where they give you like a person's name and you have to say why they're famous, and so you just like come up with who's got the best bluff. So, that's kind of cool. Actually, what this is like game related. Um, I went to a small gathering a little while ago and we were playing Bananagrams. But halfway, or I guess we, we finished one game and we were like, well, what do we like? You know, do we want to play again? And we're like, uh, let's do it. But instead of making real words, we're going to make up words. And then at the end, we have to explain what all the words are. <laughs> and it was so fun i would highly recommend doing it so you know you get like a word that's like all all vowels or one that is you know like this long and it's like there's like eight k's in it but you have to like explain what it is and so some people will be like this is a this is a fancy new magical drug that's just come out and it's or some other people will be like this is a fantasy name it said it's pronounced george but it has like eight a's in it you're like how <laughs> Um, or like that kind of thing. Like it was, it was really, really fun. Or like, oh, here's a, this is the ruins of a castle. And if you take the, the A off the end, that's actually uh, grammatically incorrect in this language. Like I would highly recommend just like, yeah, playing games and just like making stuff up. Cause often when you just make stuff up on the fly, like improvisation can be, can be really, really fun. Um, so Sort of along those same lines, our topic for next week is going to be storytelling across different mediums. So not necessarily not books, but how storytelling in, can move into TV shows and video games and just kind of some of that crossover, what we can learn from other mediums. And this is just kind of something we're continuing in through January of all of the things that bring us writing joy and where we can learn new things in unexpected places and take off a little bit of the pressure. Well. Yeah, I think it'll be it'll be good. I, I, I was thinking, who's I'm like somebody in the word nerds write scripts, and I'm pretty sure it's Desiree. <laughs> Might have to like Desiree Flink. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if anybody has any kind of other non-novel related types of things they like to write, we're gonna be talking about that next week. So that'll be interesting to just like talk about how things are structured and and uh, what yeah. we. Enjoy and it, can, it doesn't even necessarily need to be if you write that personally but there can be like the storytelling in the witcher and how oh, yes, what we learn from that and how to incorporate that kind of thing and mm -hmm. the witcher the video, how things trans how like books translate to film yeah. and tv and how mm -hmm. those, the mediums and structure are different you know. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. again the witcher's been a book to a video game to a tv show so i think that could be a really good example how is the story different in all of those mediums what are the best bits you can take from favorite pieces of other media and get inspired by that. So mm -hmm. give some thought to all of that before next week's chat. So we hopefully we'll have all of you guys there with us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, awesome. thank you everybody for spending the evening with us. Does anybody have any final thoughts? Oh, and Griswold's about uh, really want to learn writing graphic I was novels. That's something say, Kyra is getting into, and th that's a great thing we can talk about next week. For sure. I've kind mm -hmm. of always side-eyed graphic novels too. So yeah, I like that idea. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, cool. Well, once again, thank you everybody for being here. Thanks for chatting with us. I, I don't know if this was like a good chat. I honestly feel like more enthusiastic about doing more creative things, which is always good. Um, <laughs> so again, our chat next week will be same time, same place, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time here on the channel. And I wish you a good week of happy reading and happy writing. Bye. Bye.